when God decided to create the world, he said, let there be. He gave the world and all the forces within it a genuine autonomy, a genuine freedom. That is what it is to be created. To be created is to have a life of one's own, whether it's an amoeba, a mosquito, or whether it's, whether it's you or me. And this autonomy comes to self-conscious freedom uh, in us human beings. Uh, and of course, if we are genuinely free, we're free to make mistakes as well as to make good decisions. Mistakes cost lives, uh, and certainly manifestly evil choices are ghastly and destructive. Uh, so, you know, we cannot have free choice without the possibility of evil. Now, that's all, if you like, fairly obvious. I think a more sophisticated point is that we can't have rational beings like you and me without a certain stability and regularity in the environment. Uh, if I was suddenly to float up through the ceiling or drop through the floor, in, and we lived in an Alice in Wonderland world, so I didn't know whether the sun would rise tomorrow or not, uh, we wouldn't be able to plan. Uh, we would therefore not be able uh, to make rational decisions. Mind as we know it would not have evolved. And so it looks as though for, people to, for there to be people like you and me and all human beings, there has to be a kind of impersonality about nature, about everything nature, doing yeah. its own and thing. And that will inevitably and mean inevitably, that... It, inevitably mean uh, that, 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 unfortunately, uh, it brings suffering and destruction. Because there's nothing wrong with, as we know, with volcanoes and earthquakes in themselves. They're simply the shifting of tectonic plates uh, on a star which is cooled enough to allow life, but is not so cool that it won't have life. If it was any hotter or if any colder, there wouldn't be life. It's because there's a, a plate on it. We can have uh, l life, but th this sort of plate, which which covers over the molten stuff inside, allows for... So it's, it's sort it, of it, the... the the cost, if you like, of, of being the embodied co conscious the, the, creatures the is, of, yes, is, is yes. at the cost of yes. obviously the, and, and the again, fragility of yeah. that, that life. Now, I, yes. can, I think all this makes, makes sense. In other words, there couldn't be people like you and me without... I can't see any other, other way uh, of creating rational beings except for something like this. But it still raises the question, and this is the overpowering question at the heart of the book, you know, was God created, justified in creating the world, you know, if this was the, yeah. the, the cost of it? And this is Ivan Karamazov's question in the heart of the book, The Brothers Karamazov, where he tells horrific stories of the suffering of children, uh, and then he turns to his brother Alyosha and says, it's not God I don't believe in, Alyosha, it's just that I return him the ticket. Is this moral... T moral protest uh, against God. Now, the implication of Ivan Karamazov's question is that it would have been better if God had not created the world in the first place. And that, for me, raises the question as, as to uh, whether I'm grateful that I'm alive, uh, are other people grateful that they're alive? Now, I can only answer that question for myself. I'm grateful that I'm alive. And I quote in the book a wonderful poem of W. H. Auden where he talks about raising his first fist in anger and despair and shouting against the sky. And then he keeps hearing the words, bless what there is for being. And I bless God for, for my being, but I can't answer that question for anybody else. Other people have to answer that for themselves. This is Premier Christian Radio. Where faith comes to life.